Hello, this is Deborah Yad, and welcome back to Redirecting. So now apparently we have another story in which we've said many times before that these stories will continue to come and come and come. But this time we're talking about a black man who was at a Doubletree hotel and he was talking to his mother on the phone. Oh, how dare he do that? You're talking to your mother on the phone in the lobby of the Doubletree motel or hotel? We've got to call the cops on you because that is not allowed. You know what it sounds like to me, family? First of all, I'm going to roll this uh, quick video clip for you. It's actually a couple of clips, and I'm going to roll those for you so that you can kind of get a firsthand um, explanation of what happened, and then I'll be right back. Earl, he's calling the cops on me because I'm taking a phone call at the Doubletree Hotel. Say hi, Earl. Say hello. You came over here because I was taking a phone call in the area where no one was. I had a family emergency and I was taking a phone call and this guy's harassing me. And he wants to call the cops on me because I'm taking a phone call in the lobby of my hotel. You really want this PR issue, Earl? Do you? Portland police will be here tonight. Thank you. Call them. I'm waiting. Okay. They're coming. Why? Why are they coming? Escorting you off the property. Because what? And I'm staying here? Not anymore. Oh, okay. I'm staying here. I have a hotel. Are you? I didn't do anything to you. I'm sitting over here taking a phone call, and you interrupted my phone, Earl. Hey, y'all. Um, wanted to share an incident with y'all that happened to me tonight. Um, I usually don't post stuff, you know, on social media like that, but I felt the need to share this experience with everybody um, because I plan to try to seek justice and make sure that that's not happen to anybody else. Um, briefly, in summary, I'll explain what happened tonight. I was in Portland, um, first time here, booked a hotel room. Um, came down to see the Travis Scott show and um, I was racially profiled and um, treated unfairly um, and for no other reason other than from my point of view um, it had to be my race because there were other patrons in the lobby at the time and Okay, as you see, this young man in a hotel room talking to his mom, they call the police. It's sounding to me like somebody is losing their mind. They're losing their scruples because our presence gets people ticked off. You don't have to be doing anything significant. You can be sitting in a coffee shop, standing in the Doubletree Motel, taking a nap in a um, college room, cafeteria. Uh, you can be at a fitness center, on a golf course, at a pool, pool site, in a store. It doesn't matter. Just walking, talking, living, breathing while black. Okay. And so what it sounds like to me, if this is an offense that causes some people to call the police, they actually pick up the phone and dial 911. Doesn't it sound like someone has lost their marbles? Like their elevator isn't going all the way to the top. Like they have some screws missing. Like something is going on inside of their heads that's abnormal. And I'm, I'm not talking about the, the people that they're calling the police on. I'm talking about the ones who are actually taking the time to call the police. It sounds like there is something going on in their minds. Like they are losing touch with reality as if their minds have been altered in some kind of way from what is normal, should I say. Because if these things that they feel are offenses worthy of calling the police, I'm telling you something is not right there. And there need to be some type of psychiatric evaluation of these people. I mean, you have people in the stores trying to use coupons and someone calls the police on them. So, again, who is the one that has a mental issue? We are starting to see these stories more and more, and they get more and more ridiculous, if I might add. 
more and more ridiculous. And it's really sad to see because that puts pressure on the victims. And then you have the people who do these things who try to play the victim, as in the case of the one barbecue Becky, when the police get there and she's explaining her story, whereas it was a white woman who actually called her out uh, for her actions against these black men. She tried to paint a picture as though she was somehow being attacked. And she breaks down crying with her big behind. You see, so she played the victim while she was victimizing someone else, right? So she played the victim as if she thought those tears were some, some, in some kind of way going to mean something to the police officers. So these are the types of things that happen in this country. You can't win for losing. And they think this stuff is normal. They think it's normal. They think we are just saying too much and doing too much when we even talk about it. This is what I have to say for those who continue to call us racist for even talking about these things. You know what I have to say about that? You are very, very simple minded. You need to have some type of psychiatric evaluation if you think we are the problem for talking about what you are doing to us. You have had a break with reality. The God that you claim to serve is not real because he does not approve of this behavior. You think it's normal. You think we're abnormal. So there is clearly a problem with your mental capacity because these occurrences that we continue to see, again, getting more and more ridiculous, it shows that there's something wrong with you, not with us. Okay, family, I'm out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.